I have to say, I think, think HBO wasted their money and possibly our time. Right then, hello there, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, hello wherever you are, whenever it is. My name's Paul, you possibly know me from the daily teasers I do, the quizzes I do every day. Um, you possibly also have seen some of my movie reviews that float past every so often. I've recently seen Candyman and Dune, which are both fantastic, I should add. But I also, ew, I also talk about TV shows I've watched. I'm planning on watching The Evil of the Daleks at some point soon. I'm planning on watching The Evil of the Daleks at some point soon, once my, once my tumble dryer calms down. Um, but I've just recently, just last night, finished watching Lovecraft Country. I saw episode 10 last night, it's called Full Circle, and I wanted to tell you about it. Episode 10, Full Circle, opens with a traditional summary of the story so far. And then, just before the titles run, it shows us Tick, Letty, Montrose and Hippolyta, Jonathan Majors, Jenny Smollett, Michael K. Williams and Arjun Ellis, driving to the office with Dee, Jada Harris, uh, in the back boot of the car and taking her to her room in the flat, where Tick recites the spells that unlocks the Book of Names. He and Letty promptly collapse, awakening in an otherworldly, other-dimensional realm where Tick's mother warns him that he will have to sacrifice himself, and Tick's great-grandmother tells Letty that she will have to avoid making the mistakes that could cripple their son. Dee's curse is lifted by the group, by the group, but her arm, her left arm, possibly significant, stays withered. Post-titles, the group have to try and summon Titus, the founder of the Ardham Lodge, and steal part of his flesh so that they can bind Christina Braithwaite, Abby Lee. The group realise, however, that they will also need Christina's blood in order to prevent him, or prevent her, killing Tick at the ceremony she's planning to hold at the Equinox. A ceremony that looks certain to kill Tick. Now, I've probably made a complete hash of that summary, but I hope I haven't. And I hope it's something you want to look at. Because, well, let's try and do this two things at a time. Let's look at the episode and then the series. What did I make of, of both? Let's start with that episode. I am walking away from Full Circle feeling very impressed. Granted, it's an episode that, that in the first half hour or so, has a hell of a lot of talk, a hell of a lot of exposition. I like that word, exposition. Isn't that good? Exposition. Showing off my complete lack of education, but there we go. At any rate, there's a lot of talk in that first half hour. Something that left me underwhelmed with episode five, Strange Case. Uh, even though that's a perfectly good episode, I should say. But that talk is something that is very, very, very much needed. That talk is something I think that's very much needed. Older and wiser characters, dead ones usually, have stuff they need to tell the main two characters before they can do what they do. Um, and it's, so it's very much needed as a, a thing, especially when we see Tick and Letty in church at one point during the episode, um, getting, it's not explicitly said, but I think the two characters are getting married to each other, much like a terminal cancer patient on a deathbed, Tick wants to marry Letty, uh, but also he, I believe, gets baptised. They're both wearing formal robes you see in some African-American churches. I think it's a, a very much a last-minute baptism uh, done in an awareness of an impending death, but it's also something that mirrors knights way back in medieval times. They would, before getting their spurs and getting a formal ritual, had to spend a night in prayer. So it's, it's Tick getting married and becoming a knight, so to speak. His heroicness is sanctified, if you will. Um, at any rate, the talk ends 
when the action starts, action that inevitably sees Letty seriously injured before she gets to be the hero she is. And it also is action that inevitably ends during the fight against Christina with Tick's death, a death that inspires Letty to carry on the fight and to make sure that Christina and other white people cannot any longer use magic. The episode had a great little through arc to it and a cast that excelled itself. Um, Angelou Alice as Hippolyta is great. Jonathan Majors and Jenny Smollett are equally as good as the heroic central characters. Uh, Michael, gave, Michael K. Williams, there's a slip, Michael K. Williams, the late Michael K. Williams, was superb in the whole series. I've said it before, his death is a tragedy, and it's a hell of a loss, especially when you see quite how touchingly he carries, he follows through Montrose's through arc in this whole story, and it's beautiful and touching to see, and it's a great loss to the profession, it really is. The overtones are some of the possible undertones to the episode. There's possibly more than the obvious couple I spotted, I think. Um, we see Christina Braithwaite ultimately is killed at the very end of the episode by D, uh, the Jada Harris character, whose withered left hand has been replaced by a bionic one that Hippolyta created for her. Now, as far as I can tell, Jada Harris, bless her, is left-handed, like myself. It would take me another Southpaw to spot that one. I tend to spot left-handed people. There's a couple in the Sarah Jane Adventures who I've spotted who are Southpaws, and I, I tend to spot that. Now, this is something that may sound trivial, possibly is trivial, but I'm aware that left-handers face trivia, uh, face face prejudice, however mild it may be. There are some parts of the world where you cannot give somebody something with your left hand. You can't hand someone a folk or someone a, a gift with the left hand. It's seen as not the done thing. Of course, I'm very annoyed by that and very aware of where it comes from. It's a kind of unthinking prejudice. I mean, I know it's not as bad as some prejudices faced by people of colour or by women, but I've had the odd comment about it myself and seen the odd thing. So seeing a character with a deformed left hand uh, and kill, again, with their left hand, at the climax of a series that focuses in part on ritual ma magic, something that sees the right-hand path as being good and the left-hand path as being evil, that is something I found uh, just a little... A little bit offensive myself. I know that's tri it's a trivial thing, but I'm left-handed, and I know we've had the needle occasionally over the years, so it might well be oversensitive, but it's something I felt offended by and aware of. Um, there's possibly other overtones in it as well. I don't know if it if it's just me, but it struck me that Tick's death strapped, bleeding to death, and strapped to what looked like an occult version of a crucifix was vaguely reminiscent of a crucifixion. Or should I say, the crucifixion. He's being sacrificed on behalf of others so that others may be saved. And after somebody is betrayed by a kiss, um, when Ruby and Christina spend time together. It's That ends up with Christina stealing Ruby's body in order to get access to Tick, in order to kill him. Messiah and possibly as a TV show. I don't know. I really don't. But it's something I noticed, and it's something to me that seemed obvious. Whatever way you look at it, I think personally full circle, whatever the overtones. It means that this particular episode is both a good finale, a good conclusion to the series, and a very good episode. Again, it's a bloody good series. Talking of that series, what did I mean 
with my little opening comment there. I'm sure you saw it on the way in. Um, what did I make of the series? Lovecraft Country is an absolutely fantastic bit of work. Cast, writing, direction, production standards, hell, even the music. The music's quite good. Um, I like the closing, the closing titles close on a version of Cinnamon. And although I personally preferred Nina Simone's version, their version they use is pretty bloody good. Um, but yes, I've seen a very good series. I've seen a put, put together, I've seen a superbly put together piece of work that HBO's wasted its money on. What? I hear you say. Wasted? I hear you say it. As I listen to chins hitting the floor in surprise. Yes, wasted to an extent. HBO commissioned a fantastic series that told a gruesome tale, one well, that's got relevance to it, uh, made no series that one of its themes was uh, the racism black people get from white people, uh, or get being on the wrong end of white people. And it's something that is very relevant when the series first aired, not long after the death of George Floyd. And it's current now here in the UK, given the racism row surrounding the Yorkshire Cricket Cup. Google for it. HPO commissioned a brave, stunning, beautiful piece of work in Lovecraft Country, and they've wasted the money producing it by refusing to invest in a second series, one that could well have made them more money and certainly got them a few more gongs, because the first one has got awards up to the blessed eyeballs. They have wasted their money in only making one series because the international sales I'm told have done well for them of this one series and a second series would have done equally as well for them. I understand TV companies have to look at the money sides of things. I do. The TV business is a business. But in cancelling Lovecraft Country in refusing to put a bit more money into an already superb series, HBO has missed a chance to grow what could have been a superb franchise. They have wasted their original investment by refusing to invest more. I think that's a shame. I think what they've made in this one series of Lovecraft Country is fantastic. I still think you should go see it. Whatever HBO say about it. At any rate, thank you for watching this little lot. I hope you'd like to come back for more at some point. I'm going to be watching Evil of the Daleks at some point in the next few weeks. I hope you'd care to join me. Have fun, take care, be good, and uh, don't waste don't your waste money. Your money. money. money.